Now, Chandrayaan-3 has yet again achieved a significant milestone. It has inched closer to moon with less than 1500 kilometers to cover. Today, ISRO performed the next lunar-bound orbit maneuver on Chandrayaan, placing the spacecraft further closer to the moon's to the moon's uh, south pole. Now, Chandrayaan 3's next operation is to further reduce the orbit of the spacecraft, and this is scheduled for August 14th. And this is going to happen in the course of the days that pass by in the countdown up until August 23, when finally Chandrayaan 3 Vikram lander is supposed to have a soft landing on the south pole of moon. The operation in fact is then going to further lower spacecraft's orbit and uh, ISRO is scheduled to separate the lander module Vikram from the propulsion module and this, this significant uh, activity will take place on August 17th. Now, if this mission is successful of uh, separating the lander and the rover and it, it will make India the first country to make a soft landing on moon's south pole. I want to start my conversation with my panelists and uh, let them let me get them on board one by one. Uh, uh, Group Captain V and Jai, you know, uh, it's, it, it's an achievement as in, as in when the days pass by and we are inching closer to the August 23 landmark day when the lander is supposed to be uh, reaching the south pole of moon. These orbits continue to reduce and the speed at which the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft is moving also reduces significantly. Now, there has been an important statement that has been made by the ISRO chief and he said despite any failures, that Chandrayaan-3 encounters in terms of two, both of its engines failing, it will still allow for the lander to land on the south pole of moon. Now, how does, how is this technically possible? Well, Megha, thank you very much for uh, inviting us here on, to keep the views, uh, to uh, you know, inform the public at large. Uh, we should not see this particular uh, part of the statement, what he had uh, said, that even if two engines fails, even then it will be able to land. You know, this is only a part of uh, 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 some corollary questions that was uh, uh, raised onto the issue. Uh, the thing is that as you have uh, you know, introduced the subject, Chandrayaan has been inserted into the lunar orbit. The first time when it was inserted, the, the perilune, that is the farthest point, sorry, the uh, uh, apolune, the farthest point of the orbit was about uh, uh, 14,000 plus kilometers. Second uh, orbit lowering, it came to about 4,300 odd kilometers. Today it has just, uh, you mentioned that it, has, it is at about uh, 1,800 uh, kilometers or so. No, this, these are the phase four of the Chandrayaan. Phase four of the Chandrayaan is the moon bond maneuvers in which the entire uh, Chandrayaan will be brought into a circular orbit of 100 into 100 kilometers. That means the perigee will be 100 kilometers and the apogee, perilune and apolune will be 100 kilometers each. And it will also be fine tuned into the polar or orbit you know, about 89.9 uh, uh, degree or so. So all these will be fine tuned. And today is only, you know, 9th of August. 21st is uh, reasonably far uh, out, 21st, 22nd. Uh, in this cushion time, I think ISRO is going absolutely right on the track. They should be able to do this. Now coming back to your second part of the question. Look, uh, Chandrayaan 3 has been designed to land onto the four legs with the four engines. And these four engines are each of them uh, are the Vikram engines. They have got about 800 odd newtons of the thrust power at 100% and 800 uh, and one newton, just for the sake of your viewers, let me explain. Uh, one newton is equivalent to about 0.225 pound. So if you calculate, uh, uh, entire 800 newtons of uh, 
uh, the, the thrust, it will translate into 180 odd kgs. Now, Chandrayaan 3, the lander uh, uh, module, along with the rover within inside it, is weighing, I think, about uh, something around, I think, 4,000, uh, 1,746 kilogram. Now, that was the weight here on the Earth. On Moon, gravity is just about 1,6. It weighs about 291.6 kgs. Now, so even if two engine goes out, two engine remains. So each engine has got a thrust of 180 kg equivalent. So 136 kg equivalent of energy is there with two engines. And all these two engines don't give 100%. About 0.9 factor we keep it there. So still about you know, 350 odd kg can be managed. But that is not the point. Mega, we must understand. If this particular thing has to land somewhere, it can land onto the three legs or four legs absolutely without any problem and come and stay there. But if it has to land on one, one point or two point, you know, it will try to tilt. The three dimensional stability will not be there. And that is an issue. Even though two engine thrusts are good enough for this uh, uh, 290 odd kgs of the lunar weight uh, Chandrayaan uh, module to land there, two engines may not be sufficient to give the entire stability onto three direction. So the first choice of giving the four engine is that with the, with the about say 40% uh, of the thrust in all four engines uh, distributed equi uh, equilaterally give a complete lateral stability in 3D and that is how it is designed to come. Okay. What Okay. What? What? I'll just take another ten seconds. Quickly. Sir. What, uh, Mr. Uh, what, Mr. Uh, Somnath had mentioned that just in case if that last moment what had happened in Chandrayaan two, if one odd engine just goes off, even then it should be able to come down. That the the the, uh, the the lift will be given sufficiently for it not to topple. But the lateral stability will be a question. Mega. Okay. All right. Uh, group captain, uh, thank you for sharing those that detailed. Uh, uh, summary of how Chandrayaan 3 is then going to maneuver in the coming days up until August 23 and then we are going to eagerly anticipate for the soft landing that takes place hopefully. Now Wing Commander Sudhakaran uh, taking on uh, from where Group Captain Vianja left off. Now in terms of the engine still operating and also the very important and challenging task of slowing down the speed of the Chandrayaan spacecraft right from 6,000 kilometers per hour up until zero. Uh, also, if you could shed light into the comparisons that we can made of the uh, route that had been taken, of the flight that had been taken by Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3, and where exactly is it that Chandrayaan 2 ended up wobbling, causing for uh, no communication to take place between ISRO and the aircraft? Uh, see, to the best of my understanding, I think uh, it was uh, uh, coming down at a rate of around 3 meters per second and uh, that was slightly more and which uh, caused the wobble and then it filtered and it lost the communication. Whereas that tilt also restricted its movement and they were not able to recover because it was being remotely, remotely controlled. Uh, this time around, I think they are trying to attempt uh, at least 40 percentage down uh, below the uh, rate of descent that they were attempting uh, last time, you know, and I, the, the, if my figures memory serves me right, it's around two meters per second, that's what they are uh, attempting. So uh, once that happens, uh, they, are, uh, they have tested it extensively. Like they have understood where they have done the mistake. They have done a lot of ground testing, simulating the conditions, the lunar conditions on Earth. And uh, that's why ISRO seems to be very comfortable this time around not to fail because uh, it's a very professional body and it, it doesn't repeat. It learns from its mistake. It's, it's okay to fail and that's where you learn maximum. And they have learned from their mistakes. And I hope uh, this time around, they're not in for any surprises. But however said and done, there are still a lot of factors which will determine uh, whether we will be able to um, uh, 
deliver the payload, which is Pragyan, onto the lunar surface exactly on the date that we uh, wanted it to be. Because um, there are, um, you know, other parameters like it could get potentially delayed into September if the uh, the lunar cycle, the lunar inclination, the lunar gravity field, and the lunar dust. These are some of the factors which will actually decide whether the um, uh, uh, the mission will be uh, exactly as per the schedule that has been planned. Otherwise, we could have uh, we could very well face uh, a delay, and it could spill over into September. Uh, the other aspects, I think they have uh, uh, validated the descent parachute, which is supposed to reduce the velocity and the retro rocket system. You know, this has been explained in very good detail by doc, uh, Group Captain uh, Dr. V.N. Jha. Uh, I don't think I'll need to reiterate that. So uh, putting all these things in factor, I think we should be comfortable and considering that the kind of tests, the quality assurance tests that they have done on ground, I right. think... Uh, stand in good uh, terms to land. Absolutely. No, you know, I'm going to then uh, post this question to Srijan Pal Singh, space experts. He's the CEO of Homi Lab. Now, uh, what is it that we are trying to achieve after allowing for the lander Vikram to reach the South Pole? Uh, how many other countries and their space agencies have been able to do so? And what kind of scientific data are we expecting for the lander to provide to ISRO? Right. So in the next uh, few days, uh, as you rightly pointed out, the orbit will start reducing. It will reduce to about 30 kilometers. And then the 15 minutes of terror is what we call in space language. That will begin. In those 15 minutes, the speed has to be reduced from 6,000 kilometers per hour to about 10, 10.8 kilometers per hour using all the thrusters which we have explained. Once the successful landing is done, the Pragyan rover comes out and we start a series of experiments. Now, many countries are interested in what we do because where we are going is a very difficult place to go, the South Pole. Nobody has ever gone to the South Pole of the Moon. It's a very cold place, usually a dark place. And that's fantastic news for a space scientist because that's the place where water in the form of frozen ice for millions of years or perhaps even billions of years might be existing. It'll, it'll give us an understanding of our own Earth, because Moon came out of Earth after a giant collision. And uh, so it'll give us an understanding of that Earth's signature four and a half billion years ago, how the Earth potentially had rocks or water or whatever else it had. It'll also give us a signature of where we might potentially settle on Moon one day. If we find water in large quantity, that would be fantastic news. We're also going to do a lot of spectrometry tests there where we will find out in the, by guiding lasers into the lunar surface, the dust which pops out, we'll try to analyze using spectrometry, which will help us understand the composition of the lunar surface. We and many other countries, in fact, all other countries, the recent news is that Russia is also launching an exact similar mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to the same region where we are going and for exactly this reason, because there's one particular compound, one element called helium-3, which we are all interested in. Now, helium-3 is an isotope. It's a sort of helium with an extra neutron. Now, this helium-3 potentially one day, maybe 10 years ahead, when we discover fusion power would be the most accessible and safe fuel for fusion power reactors. And maybe in 20 years, we will be building fusion power reactors in Moon and beaming power back to Earth. And Moon has about uh, 1.1 uh, million tons of helium-3, which is well, it's almost like infinite amount of power for Earthlings like us at this stage. So that's why you are seeing the race. Now, India is going to South Pole. Russia is going to South Pole. Russia, after like two decades, is launching a, a lunar mission directly to South Pole. So not only we have, uh, we are going to a place which is extremely important, we are also inspiring others to do the same. And I think that leadership in space technology is something which is heralding of a, of a new India, uh, which is coming up. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Srijan, for sharing those details with us. I'm out of time, but I thank all my panelists for joining me on the telecast. So we will keep a close eye on Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft and the further lunar maneuvers that it is going to take as it continues to reduce it orbits, its orbits. Uh, it's interesting times. It's a landmark achievement it, if it happens on August 23. And uh, we are keeping our fingers crossed uh, for this uh, massive world event 
that then is going to be the highlight for other global economies to then parallel. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.